Welcome to Time Machine Episode 5. For this episode, we have a duel between the defending champion New York Knicks and the challengers, one of the favorites for the 1971 title, the Milwaukee Bucks. As I mentioned in Time Machine Episode 4, this was the first season where there were conferences introduced. With the addition of the Portland Trailblazers, Buffalo Braves, and Cleveland Cavaliers, we have now two conferences. The Milwaukee Bucks, even though they lost to the Knicks in the Eastern Division Finals in 1970, now they're in the Western Conference. So if these two teams are to meet, which they are favored to win their conferences, it will be in the Finals. This is a potential Finals preview. So enjoy Clyde Frazier and Willis Reed versus Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Oscar Robertson, who you saw in the last episode. Now you get to see how they match up against another elite team, Milwaukee. And if you'll notice, a change in the starting lineup after a month since the Time Machine episode 4, the opening game, Bob Boozer moved to the bench for the more athletic, smaller, but agile and aggressive on the boards, Greg Smith. And also heading into this game, the Milwaukee Bucks have a 16-game winning streak. The largest in NBA history to this point was 18 by the New York Knicks in 1970. So they're going to have a chance to continue and tie that record against or build that streak against the Knicks. Enjoy. Gilchus Alexander, Shabbat for three, bang, oh! will get it for the win. Got it! He is hard to believe. Here's Jordan. Yes! The Magic, a 360 turn with the ribbon. Magic down the middle. Gets underneath the Worthy. Slam dunk. Third in the corner, double fake. Coming in for the first meeting with the Bucks this year, with a record of 18 and 7, lead the Atlantic Division of the Eastern Conference. Milwaukee leading the Midwest Division of the Western Conference with a record of 17 and 1. The Bucks have won 16 in a row. If they can win it this afternoon, it'll be 17, and tomorrow night they will try to match the NBA consecutive win record set last year by the New York Knicks, and they'll try to do it against the Knicks in New York. The match. So we start out the first possession with Oscar moving the ball to Bobby Dandridge, and I just like. The ball movement of the Bucks here. Look, everybody moving without the ball. Everyone gets a touch. They feed it into Kareem. See Willis Reed. He's low. He did a good job in the playoffs last year of trying to push Kareem away from the basket. Right now he's hugging his left shoulder because he knows he wants to turn over that left shoulder for the sky hook. Kareem very smartly. He's got counters. Nice drop step. Turns that right, sh that right foot. And boom. Easy layup. So a loose ball. Dave DeBusher, good reflexes, great defender, takes the ball away. And now we're going the other way. Dick Barnett is out of screen right now behind Oscar Robertson. He was guarding him. So Oscar thinks maybe he's going to throw it over the top, jumps. DeBusher smartly uses a nice bounce pass to Bradley. And then look at this two-on-one. Boom, boom. So fast. Ball always moves faster on the pass than when you're dribbling it. Or ball moves faster than man, as they say. And look, back and forth, two on one. Greg Smith doesn't even know where to go. He can't, doesn't know where to commit. Beautifully done. Textbook two on one fast break by Dave DeBusher and Bill Bradley. Two, two. So here we have Bobby Danridge making what my friend Asher likes to call a miracle whip pass. Oscar gets it on the left block, misses short. And guess who's there to tip it up? Bobby Dandridge. Following the pass he made. Look, and it's, it's rare. Dave DeBusher is actually the one that loses sight of him. Oscar misses short. Bobby Dandridge on the offensive glass. Tips it in. Even with Willis Reed with a little contest there. Four to two bucks. I'm going to keep it rolling here because I want to show you the pace. Oh, have we seen that movie before? Remember, Dime Dropper Time Machine Episode 3. This time he's not limping, gentlemen and ladies. He ain't limping. Too much space by Kareem. Not even a hand up there for Willis. That's too easy. And I'm going to keep it moving because look how quickly McLaughlin gets the ball up the court. Quick to Greg Smith. And now within like three seconds, Kareem's got the ball on the left block. This time, Willis plays him straight up. Doesn't lean to either side. Straight up. And for whatever reason, Kareem has some really weird misses sometimes. Air ball's there. Here comes Bill Bradley. Greg Smith tries to reach. And I don't even know if Bill Bradley knew he was behind him or not. But does a good job switching hands. And then a nice left-handed pass. And guess who's in transition for the J? Clyde. So the thing about Clyde is, as we know from, you know, episode three... One thing I like about him is he's so comfortable off the ball in different positions on the court, being able to be in transition. You know, the Knicks aren't the fastest paced team, but they can and they will punish your mistakes in transition. And Clyde being able to just catch one dribble, left wing, jumper. So here's Willis, just a couple possessions later, against Kareem. 
boom, bucket. So you know what the problem is here, or should I say what Willis did well. He, you see that right foot? He makes it like he's going middle, and Kareem starts going that way. That gives Willis just the space that he needs, even though there's Dick Barnett is bringing his man to him. Just enough space. He's funny. He's Oscar runs right in front of him. But it's too much space, and he's just water from outside. Like, that's the second time Kareem has not stepped up on, bro. And I think if I'm Kareem, I'm trying to make Willis take me off the dribble, not just give him space to shoot like that. I know it was a good move, but still. Mix up eight to five, Greg Smith. And you see, this is Bill Bradley sagging off Greg Smith because he can't shoot. Even though that's a shot that not a lot of people are going to take in this era with no three point line, he just can't shoot as well. So that's why he's so comfortable doing that. So he's looking for it, looking for it. Ended up handing off to Oscar. Oscar throws into Kareem. This time he posts up and take a look at this. Sky hook. But I'm going to tell you what does it for him. Right? So take a look at this. He's putting the ball on the floor, pounding it, pounding it. Willis is low and leaning all into him. It's just that freeze where he looks like he's about to go over his right shoulder. Right there. And boom. You see how Willis reacted? Now he turns over that left and he's got an open shot. Just great you know, body control, and selling his moves. Dick swings at Bradley coming off the screen. No. And look who's there for the offensive rebound. Willis. Let's see if Kareem put a body on him because that's the matchup, right? Willis has the inside position. There you go. Kareem having some trouble so far. Here we go. We're going to keep it going. Oscar Robertson coming the other way. Dick Barnett getting into his body. Oscar throws it to Kareem, and this time Kareem's looking for that cutter. But guess what? Willis sees it. He telegraphed it, and here come the Knicks with Bradley, Barnett. And by the way, if you have watched my videos, he got called for a hesitation doing that exact move in the 1970 final. So it's funny seeing that that may be just one of his moves, that little hezzy. Kicks, and who's the trailer? Dollar Bill Bradley. 12-7 to the champs. And here we go, Barnett picking up Oscar full court. Oscar pushes it, and Bowie Dandridge goes into the body of Dave DeBusher and scores. And it's funny because you'll sometimes see that call for offensive fouls in this era, but not enough contact there. Doesn't send him back or anything. Good take by Bobby D. He's got four points now. And look, Dick Barnett trying to push it. Oh, same move all the way. Psych! Kareem showing up the rim protection we saw in Time Machine Episode 4 against Atlanta. And guess what? He's not done. This time he gets out on Willis's jumper, blocks it. Dick Barnett looking for something. Now comes off the screen. And uh, just a sliver of daylight is all Dick Barnett they needs. They're getting outside beautifully. They're moving the ball around. The real good moving basketball team. 14 to 9. Here's Greg Smith. One dribble pull up like he's nice like that. Not like that. The Busher tips it to Kareem. And by the way, look at this catch right here. With his left hand, like, going over his shoulder. And then take a look at this. Just beautiful. That up. Hold on a second. The catch. The one dribble. The up. The under. The dexterity. The agility. A little backhanded layup by Kareem. So much finesse. And then, in transition, Oscar. Right elbow. Getting to a spot or wing. And one. That's what he does. And then we got Willis Reed, right, catching the ball. He, obviously, he's made a couple of jumpers, so Kareem closes out kind of hard. Goes all the way, takes a little bump, no foul. Left-handed reverse, beautiful. Let's take a look at that again. Look at the agility. The... Reed outside. Oh, he is so smooth. Got it, beauty. Great touch. One in 17, Milwaukee. We see New York putting a little pressure. Here we go, Oscar again. New York, the best defensive team in basketball. Best defensive team in the league, New York. John McLaughlin, jab step, Clyde Frazier, hand down, man down. We already know how good of a shooter John McLaughlin is. So here's Greg Smith, cross court pass to John McLaughlin. Close out his heart because he knows he can shoot. He attacks Dick Barnett's right leg. He sees Willis Reed there underneath the basket, so he stops his dribble. A little pump fake action, or not even a pump fake, a lean. He just leans in, straight up. Actually, no, it was a small pump fake. Dick Barnett is behind him, kind of gets off the floor, and then he leans in, banks it in. What a shot by John McLaughlin. And the Bucks have a 24-17 lead, and the Knicks call for time. 
And then after the timeout, Kareem. You already know what he wants to do when he has the rebound. Outlet. Greg Smith, quick pass up the court. Take a look at that beautiful in and out by Bobby Dandridge. Obviously, back in the day, you couldn't in and out like in the modern day. We're putting your hand on the side of the ball. But take a look, just that little whoop. And he's gotten the better at Dave DeBusher so far in this game. Uh, I'm sorry, in this first quarter, I should say. Take a look at the left arm as well. He has that left arm there for the arm bar. It's hard for DeBusher to block it. He's got long arms. Great finish going to his right. And then take a look at the action underneath the basket here. DeBusher pushing Greg Smith. So that made it 28 to 17, the Bucks. They've been really taking control now. Look at Oscar creating space, turn over the right shoulder, money on Dick Barnett. That made it 30 to 17. Here's Kareem still in the end of the first quarter against Willis Reed. Shows off a little jumper there. And take a look how he squares his body in midair. Boom. Take a look, he's right squared to the basket on that turnaround over the left shoulder. It's not like a full body turnaround, but a little turnaround. And then he also tries to follow his own shot. It's an amazing athlete. But this is the way the Bucks kind of screw up. They don't end the quarter ball. Frazier on a two-on-one, fakes the pass, goes up and banks it in. And then look at this mistake by Oscar. Rare mistake. Dick Barnett takes it away. Frazier goes all the way and scores. So again, you do not, as we saw in Game 7 for the Lakers, you don't want to make mistakes against this Knicks team. Turnovers, they will punish you quick. So the Bucks closed the quarter, or should I say the Knicks closed the quarter on a 12-3 to run to make it 33-30. to Bucks lead after one. Here we are in the second with the Knicks reinforcements. Dave Stallworth, bucket getter off the bench. You guys already remember from Game 7. And again, we talked about this in the Atlanta video in the last episode. Sometimes Kareem takes his angle too early, predicting where, that he's going to go over the screen. Instead, he rejects the screen. And he's got too much room. And he's got a jumper. So we saw that. I think it was Lou Hudson that did the exact same thing, almost the exact same spot on the floor in the last game. Kareem, he's too, he's showing too far to, to Stallworth's left. Just getting too ready for it. He's going too early. Got to wait a second. Gives up an open jumper. We're going to keep it moving here, though. Bucks up by two. Bobby Dandridge, quick spin. And then here comes Clyde, reaches for the steal. John McLaughlin, too much space. Why not let it fly? He's got a, he's got a strap, man. He really does. Dave Stallworth over to Willis. Again, Kareem not contesting, punished. Willis, how about a little hook shot? He's just so nice. He's just so nice. And Kareem's got his hands full. The thing is, Willis has his hands full too, but they're going at each other. So that makes Kareem work on the defensive end. Plus, he's a good defender. So... That's, you can see why, part of why they lost last year. But, of course, the Bucks have a lot better players now. McLaughlin's got the hot hand. Two dribble, pull. Yeah. Here we have a pass by an unexpected dime dropper, Dave Stallworth. Cue the music. <music> Whoop, over the head like that. Willis misses, though, finally. Kareem with the rebound, and here come the Bucks pushing it. Bobby Dandridge over to Lucius Allen. McLaughlin, he sees the hot hand and he knocks it down. But I love how Lucius Allen, UCLA, you know, won titles with Kareem. Look how quickly, did not even a dribble, just quickly move the ball, find the hot hand. No wasting dribbles and time. And then here we go with Clyde. Willis with a little pick and pop. One dribble, jumper. 20 points for Willis in the first half. Just get a little, another look at that one. A little lazy defense by McLaughlin, letting him get around it too, a little too easily for me. And then here we go, Clyde against Lucius Allen. Here's the thing. When you put smaller guards on Clyde around his sides or he's got a little height advantage on, you already know how it goes. We saw the same with Dick Garrett. Oop, dog walking him right to the spot. And this is what I love about Clyde, man. He can stop on a dime going both ways. Look at his feet. Boom. On a dime. Pointed towards the basket. Cash. And that leads us to halftime. The score at halftime is 56-55 New York after trailing by as many as 12. And here we have a halftime interview from Jack Twyman and the great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Oscar Robertson to the Bucks meant to your ball club. Well, uh, in, in Oscar, we have somebody that can uh, do the job all the time. You know, we have consistency. We have excellent consistency, you know, which is what we need in the backcourt. How about with Lou Alcindor? You're scoring more. You're shooting a better percentage. Has he helped your personal game much? Well, he's helped my personal game a whole lot in, insofar as uh, I, I make fewer turnovers now because I have somebody to pass me the ball and somebody I can pass the ball to. And, he, you know, he's helped out the rest of the, of the team. Rest of the team. Uh, we're passing better. We're helping each other. 
helping each other out on defense a lot better, and it, it's uh, it's a lot easier on us. Uh, Lou, how about this particular game? How important is this game in establishing a trend for the rest of the year? New York jumped out and beat you four straight games at the start of last season. Uh, do you have that in the back of your mind? Not really. Right now, uh, what we're trying to do is uh, achieve some kind of uh, uh, momentum. You know, we want to we want to develop winning ways and uh, try to maintain them. Of course, we want to beat the Knicks because they're the world champions. Uh, Lou Reed is uh, 22 points here at halftime. Do you did you expect the Knicks to be going to Reed as much as they have in the first half? Well, they usually uh, hit the open man. Uh, they'll go to anybody on their team that can put it in the hoop, and Wills is doing an excellent job. How about at halftime? What did Larry Costello say? Do you expect any changes here in the second half? Are you going to adjust your offense or defense any? Not really. Uh, we just there's a few things that we have to have to do, and uh, once we do that just got to try and play the game. That's what it comes down to. Lou, thank you very much. Continued good luck. Have a good year. Score 60 to 60, not to actually start the second half, but 60 to 60 right here. Here comes Clyde bringing up the ball. Throws it to Bill Bradley. Notice McLaughlin's putting a lot of pressure on him here. As we saw in the last episode, the Bucks in the second half put more defensive pressure on the Hawks and turn the game around. You see a little bit here, but Bill Bradley makes a nice quick move, sees Kareem helping, dishes it to Willis, pump fake, jumper. And let's look, take a look again. I like how Bill Bradley spins real quick, boom, makes a nice little pass. Willis kind of fumbles it, but I like the pump fake. And then two arms running at him, one Greg Smith, the other the 7-2 Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Bucket for Willis Reed. Knicks lead 62-60. Couple plays later, scores tied at 62. We have Clyde. Here comes a screen by Willis to his right. And again, it's Kareem getting stuck in that position, showing a little too early, just like we saw in episode four and playing earlier in the game. And Clyde, very smartly, high IQ player he is, he sees the whole left side open, rejects the screen. Nice quick crossover going left. No buck ready. Sky hook. Classic. One dribble. Willis reaches, doesn't get it, and it's just a clear, no contest, basically. Timing of Kareem is good right as he reaches, and man, it's beautiful. Unstoppable. Now we have a nice pass in the high post to Dave DeBusher, and now Willis Reed, jab step, back to Dave. Look at that, relocation, jumper. Love the movement without the ball by DDB. And that was, that was one of the several jumpers he had already hit in this game. This is the first one I'm showing. Nice pass by Willis. All these Knicks move really well without the ball. Kareem, always looking to outlet. John McLaughlin all the way. And listen to the crowd and just take it, take a listen, take it all in. You can feel the momentum shifting. Frazier checked by Smith. Almost 11,000 suddenly woke up on that drive by McLaughlin. Good contest, didn't leave his feet. Uh-oh. And a timeout is taken by the Knicks. 73-70, to 70, the Bucks. Let's take a look at Oscar's pull-up. You know Oscar feels the momentum. He senses the moment. And you know him. He has spots. Hand check city. Uh-oh, how do I combat that? Pull up in your face. So here, Oscar, by the way, four for four on, uh, in the third quarter. And take a look at Clyde here, breaking the ankles of Greg Smith. Oh, man, shifty nifty. And I don't know how good those shoes traction are. Boom, change of direction. People say they had no handles back then, huh? Guess not. It was a foul, by the way. I just wanted to show it. Here's Oscar posting up Clyde, one of the best the best point guard defender, guard defender in the league. Clyde pokes the ball away from behind. Knicks can't contain. Oscar with a pump fake. Misses the mid-range. Rare miss. Scramble. Guess who comes up with it? Clyde. Take a look at this. One-on-one with Oscar. Tough finish. Goes right into the body. And for all you younger guards out there, take a look at the way Clyde goes into the body, at his chest, basically, upper body area. Takes the contact and finishes. Did not shy away from it. I'm going to show you one more time. Boom. Right there. Goes up strong. Takes the contact. Clyde Frazier, baby. 
Here's Oscar. Tough defense there by Reardon. No foul. And you know what's funny? They call an offensive foul on Oscar for sticking his butt out. Unreal. Classic 70s and 60s ball. Reardon all over him. A lot of hands. Aggressive. Clear foul right there. And boom. So here's Bobby Dandridge. Kareem looking to get the ball against Willis. Turns over that left shoulder. Good contest by Willis here. Doesn't leave his feet. Just puts a hand up. Still a good look for Kareem, but solid defense. I like the rebound from the busher and the outlet. Here's Reardon. Kareem's first instinct is to run to the basket. Who does this remind you of from the la uh, episode three against Willis Reed? Will Chamberlain. And you know what happens to Willis? And shoot that shot. That midi, good job by Reardon. Looking, always looking for the trailer. You always got to look for your trailer as a point guard. Bucket. He's just so nice. Knicks down four late in the game. Dave DeBusher throws the ball to Dave Stallworth in the mid post. Bobby Dandridge lunging from the top side. Stallworth smartly turns over that right shoulder. A little up fake. McLaughlin flies by. And look, to take away any chance of McLaughlin elevating for a block or a contest here, Stallworth leans in, doesn't get an offensive foul, and banks it in. What a beautiful shot by Stallworth. Take a look. He made a great contribution in this game off the bench with his scoring. And then on the next play, Oscar Robertson pull up. No good. Scramble for the loose ball. Comes out to Reardon. Pushing it up the court. Throws it to Dave Stallworth. It's a three-on-two break. Back to Reardon. McLaughlin and Oscar the only two bucks back. McLaughlin steps out. Oscar doesn't want to rotate and leave Frazier under the basket. Wide open Stallworth. And we got a tie game at 89. About a minute or so later... Willis Reed picks up his fifth foul, and Dave DeBusher gets hit in the eyes. So Red Holtzman puts both of them on the bench for a little bit and puts in Phil Jackson. And take a look at what Phil does here on the break. Spin move layup to give the Knicks the lead. The Zen Master. Not the Zen Master yet. Take a look here. The lefty puts it in his right hand. John McLaughlin reaches. Phil Jackson teaches. And the Knicks take the lead. So the Bucks. After this, Greg Smith missed from the foul line. Have now missed three free throws in the quarter in the last two minutes. Or just three free throws in the last two minutes. Kareem missed two. And mind you, Kareem, in a book I read on the Knicks 1970 championship season, missed some crucial free throws in game two of the conference finals. So even though he's a good free throw shooter, something you got to hit are clutch free throws, especially if you're tasked with being the closer on this team. So something Kareem's going to have to look at going towards the playoffs. So you know those high-pressure situations are going to be there. The right now with the Knicks, with Willis still on the bench, DeBusher still on the bench, outside of Frazier, the best shot creator on the floor right now for the Knicks is Dave Stallworth. So where are they going to go to get offense? They've put Greg Smith, the bigger defender. He plays the power forward, but he's undersized, around 6'4", on Frazier with long arms. And the shot clock winding down. Doesn't matter. Stone cold killer. Late game. 95-89. The Knicks. But the Bucks ain't going home yet. John McLaughlin from deep. There's no three-point line, but it's a long two. 95-93. 18 for John, as you hear the commentator Keith Jackson say. Crowd loud. Uh-oh. Silencer again. Let's take a look one more time. Clyde Frazier. He knows what time it is. Willis Reed still on the floor. Greg Smith trying to make him go left. He does go left. Pump fake. And Clyde's so good at using that pump fake. Gets him in the air. Perfectly goes up as he lands. 97-93. The score's 97-94 with around a minute 45 to play. Willis Reed is back in the New York lineup. Bobby Dandridge reaches and lunges for the steal. Dave DeBusher comes off. Kareem takes a step up. McLaughlin recovers and takes who Dandridge was guarding. But what happens here on the weak side, Greg Smith, who's guarding Dave Stallworth, because Kareem has stepped up, he's trying to take Willis Reed for a second. But Kareem is okay. He's going back to Willis Reed. You can see he's fine. Willis Reed and Dave Stallworth are both out of frame. But look who's freed up. Dave Stallworth moving without the ball, and Greg Smith pays for it. Again, Dave Stallworth, six points in the fourth, 99-94. And on the other end, Bobby Dandridge, he had a really tough fourth quarter. This was part of it. Charges into De uh, to Reardon, picks up an offensive foul. Mike Reardon had a great second half, really good con contributions in the fourth. 
And then here comes the dagger. Courtesy of Willis Reed, ladies and gentlemen. He's, they, him and Kareem, Kareem have gone at it all night, but Willis got the better of him yet again. Look at that, look at that footwork, man. Oh, that's pretty. 101.94 comes in after sitting on the bench for multiple minutes. Fake right, shake left. Left foot is down beautifully. Oh, it's pretty over the left shoulder. And that is the end. The Knicks would go on to win it 103 to 94. They outscored the Bucks 29 to 11 in the fourth quarter. Seven of those 11 points were scored by Kareem. So the overall takeaways I have, even though Kareem had an amazing game, 33 and 16, his stats look good. Again, Willis Reed got the better of him. It's like he almost has a psychological edge. And then Frazier, he looked like he surpassed Oscar at this point of his career. And when you look at the Bucks rotation, 47 minutes played for Kareem, 42 for Bobby Dandridge, and 46 for John McLaughlin. The only two players that played over 44 minutes for the Knicks were Reed and Frazier, who played the whole game. So the Knicks have a little bit more depth. They have the psychological edge. They have more experience. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the Knicks, the Bucks turned the ball over 19 times. So closing the game and settling down is going to be the key for them going forward. I'll end the suspense. Both these teams got the number one seeds in their conference on a collision course to meet in the finals, but the Bucks were very fortunate to play against a Laker team in the conference finals with no Jerry West or Elgin Baylor, both injured. Elgin ruptured his Achilles early in the season, basically, basically the end of his career. So Wilt by himself carried him to the conference finals. They couldn't beat the Bucks. So the Bucks have a golden chance now to win the championship. The Knicks, believe it or not, they lost a seventh game at home by a narrow margin, by one possession, to the rival Washington Bullets. Third time's the charm. The Bullets finally got over the hump and beat the rival Knicks. More content on how that happened coming on this channel very soon. So Bucks and Bullets in the finals. And the Bucks are clearly the favorite now on the next episode of Dime Dropper Time Machine. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to comment and subscribe.